just going through Mackay on our way to investigate three wind farm sites, Lotus Creek wind farm, uh, Clark Creek or Clark Range wind farm and also the Boomer Range wind farm. So we're just going to go through to Serena, hang a right and then go down the Marlborough Road and it's from that road we can access those three wind farm sites. Um, these three wind farm sites cumulatively you're looking at say at well over 100 kilometres of linear length and, and around 300 turbines so it's a big cluster of turbines um, and again they're on the ridge tops <coughs> of those ranges the Boomer Range, Clark Range uh, yeah so it's in it's those uh, ridge tops that are actually you know they're still the remnant I can even see here I wouldn't be surprised that range there in the distance is a part of the Lotus Creek range and as you can see they're vegetated um, they're remnant they've escaped urbanization industrialization um, agriculture mining because of its steep terrain but now it's the wind industry that wants wants it so uh, yeah so the wind industry is taking over what's left of our remnant forest really, those ridge tops. Um, I do believe there's two endangered cycad species on that Clark Range that are going to be bulldozed for the construction of the wind farm. Um, you're looking at about two to two and a half thousand hectares of classified remnant forest to be cleared um, and much of that is koala habitat greater glider. Um, yeah so it's just a just another form of industrialization of the landscape of those areas that have escaped human exploitation thus far. Yeah, so here we are, Mount Benmore Station, west of Rockhampton, we've got an emu on the road. Dead dingo here. And a dead dingo that's uh, got a shot. shot. We watched, looked at that on the way up, it's been shot through the head with my shotgun. It's so good to see emus in the wild. Such a big animal. There's very few here. There should be hundreds here, or dozens at least, and there's very, very few left. They're being wiped out across Australia. Yeah, on a typical drive through outback Queensland, you should be seeing hundreds, if not thousands, of them just roaming through the countryside. Um, you're lucky to see one or two these days. Yet another species on the way out. Yeah, so we're in the, the um, Goodadulla National Park, um, just heading north. Um, this is a yeah, beautiful area, rocky outcrops. Um, we were quite fortunate just to see a few emus on the way here just a few moments ago. A lot of birds, um, beautiful place. No wind, again. <laughs> Uh, but we're looking north here and basically this entire vista will be wind turbines. So um, so this is sort of like indicative of the country that will be built upon for the uh, Boomer Range wind farm. Yeah, just uh, it's criminal, absolutely insane in this day and age, 2023, to be smashing up, fragmenting intact forests for green renewable energy. It's it's um, late morning. You know, any other place where there's going to be wind farms, we expect wind like the south coast of Victoria or, or South Australia. There'll be wind this time of day. Here, there's just nothing. We're in the tropics. We get doldrums. There's just no wind. I'm not saying there isn't wind at some stages, there are, but there's large lengthy periods when there's just no wind at all. It's just bullshit. So you, where's your storage? Yeah, so I spoke to where's the fella called Bruce Mountain, um, energy expert, and he did a bit of a tour of Queensland, and he said he was a bit gobsmacked as well of why these wind farms are going into these, these sort of localities. He said the first thing that is an indicator of good wind is that the trees actually grow on an angle. So 
there's no trees here growing on angles, you know, you know, being windswept by the, the forces of wind. It's just dry eucalypt. Um, it's just, a, it's just bizarre. Yeah, so we're on top of the Connors Range, which is the coastal range right behind the coastal community St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence is down there. You can see a, a storm or a rain front coming in, a little squall of rain. Um, actually, I'll just see it. It's like a peregrine, the way it's going. We saw a couple of wedgies here, wedge tail eagles, as we pulled up, just catching the thermals. Hitting the, uh, yeah, the thermals of air as it's pushing up against the coastal ranges, being thrust upwards. Just to, a bit further to the west here is the Lotus Creek wind farm site. Um, we've just spent a couple of days there. Magnificent, magnificent, magnificent place. Uh, amazing forest, full of koalas. Even emus. We, so we are coming back just a few moments ago down the dirt road and came across a couple of emus. How often do you drive down through some great intact Australian forests, see koalas just by <laughs> looking out the car window, emus, wedge-tail eagles, everything. Just a really great piece of intact Australian forest. These places are becoming really, really rare. They're all being fragmented up carved up, industrialised, and now it's these places that are being targeted by the wind industry. The reason why the wind industry is getting away with it is because they're exempt from the Vegetation Management Act. So under State Planning Code 23 for wind farms, they are exempt from the Vegetation Management Act, the Nature Conservation Act, which means they can put wind farms, industrial scale wind farms, in any vegetation at all. There can be high altitude rainforest, koala forest, koala habitat. So at a state level, wind farms can go into any vegetation. 